Hello, this is Paolo Copage and welcome to a new Sleepy Sunday Let's Play with the game Icy Frostbite Edition by Inner Void. I've been told, I've been reliably informed that this game is a mixture between The Curious Expedition and Neo Scavenger. And that intrigues me. That says to me, looting and probably almost certain, certain death. So, I mean, it's the best of both worlds, really, isn't it? Well, worst of both worlds, whichever you want to look at it. <laughs> and um, the other thing is, I was thinking, it's getting to spring now. You know, the sun is coming out, the days are getting longer. Flowers are blooming, trees are blossoming. What better way to really nail that home than to be playing a, a, a post-apocalyptic game based in a, a permanent state of winter? In, I, I mean, you know... It, it, it's the well, I'd say it's the polar opposite. It's definitely a step back from what we from what we've got at the moment. I, I, that's how I like to see. It. Anyway, enough jibber jabbering. Let's crack on. This is being a, a sleepy Sunday. Let's play. It is going to be a slightly slower game than the other games I like to uh, show on the channel. Uh, but it's one which does intrigue me. It does look pretty cool. It's um it's based on uh, character development and looking after a. Uh, a, f a family of sorts and there's inventory management and a lot a lot of talking so there'll be a lot a lot of speaking and uh well let's get into it shall we new game now i have played through the prologue just to make sure that a i could get this thing to bloody record which incidentally it doesn't on my normal recording software i'm having to use obs on this which is why my sounds a little bit weird and um well, uh, I, I haven't really explored it much, so I'm not going to go crazy. We could play Survivor. The Survivor difficulty offers balanced challenge. We don't want a balanced challenge. We're here for the story. It's all about the story. So we're just going to go with Explorer. The Explorer difficulty offers a simple survival challenge. That'll do me. And allows the player to focus on the narrative. Awesome. Fights will be easier and plenty of supplies will be found when traveling across the white wasteland. That means no one has to die unless I make a mistake. So lots of people are still going to die, just not from starving, which is absolutely fine by me explore it is and this is where we set up our character now as you can see there's a few different ones to choose from um i think he, he now he looks very cold doesn't he not only does he have the rusky hat and some sort of nipple chain hanging off it but he he looks cold he's pale it's it's like a permafrost on the skin that's pretty that's pretty groovy but then again the guy not only not only has glasses he has goddamn cyberpunk goggles. I mean, you, you can't you can't go wrong with that, can you? It's it's going to have to be the older guy, I think. It makes me look wise. It makes me look wise. It means that any mistakes I make from here on in will be negated from how wise I look, and I like that. I like that. So we've got our different um, uh, places we need to pop our skill points, which do. Uh, go up in increments so it starts off with just uh, one and then it goes to three then six then ten and then what's the last one 15 so it does ramp up quite a lot so you can't well you could specialize but you'll be absolutely useless with the rest the other thing i noticed on my little look-see beforehand was if you don't put a point into each one you do get a penalty action uh, which is uh, is not good so um, i'm thinking i'm thinking we just do one of each initially and then we see what we got left so three four five six seven eight so that's nine points eaten up straight away now i'm thinking post-apocalypse you know this is a narrative game as well speechcraft is going to be pretty important so um, i mean it gives us extra die in combat uh, your ability to deceive, persuade, and intimidate other people. It is mostly useful in dialogues and events, but it also unlocks some intimidate and incite actions in combat, which we do have already anyway. Uh, hmm. I mean, as far as Phil is concerned, that's a pretty good one. As far, uh, The other thing to look for is the uh, how we're going to go about killing people. Let's face it, people are going to die. If it's not us, it's them. So we need to decide on whether we're going to do melee, firearms, or bow. Now, again post-apocalypse i'm thinking the melee you don't really want to get too close to people showers don't work anymore people smell so melee is no good and it also means you've got to get deep down and dirty with people and the bad thing about that is if they've got specializations in firearms or bows you're buggered so i think melee is off firearms sounds good sounds good i do know though for a fact that bullets are used as currency so again you don't really want to be specialized in that and literally burning your money or firing your money if you want 
So I think the only way to go about this is to bow it up. Now, as far as bows are concerned, the ability to use bows and crossbows, awesome. The higher the skill, the lower the penalty when shooting with these weapons. Without investing any points, a character gets five penalty actions when using bows and crossbows in fights, while each point invested removes one penalty action. So you want to do at least a couple, I suppose, so there's less penalty actions. I mean, six cost of six to go halfway up and lose three penalty actions, that seems pretty legit. And we've still got 21 points left. I like that, I like that. Uh, now, hunting, scavenging. Again, important things. If this is based on Neo Scavenger, then you know scavenging is definitely going to be important. So uh, the skills knowledge related to searching for useful items in abandoned places of any kind. Each level of this skill reduces the chance of becoming involved in dangerous events while scavenging and improves the loot earned after a successful search. Not so worried about the actual loot earned, but less dangerous events sounds good. So let's pop that up to two for the time being. Hunting. Each skill of this level reduces the chance of becoming involved in dangerous events when hunting. Okay, so we'll put that up to two as well. Exploration, what be that? Your ability to explore the wilds and move through dangerous territories it is used to uncover secret scavenging and hunting locations on the map, but it also unlocks some maneuver actions in combat. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They're getting better. So, as you can see, if you look down below, actions available in combat that is a bronze skill and as you go up you get a silver skill still a silver skill then you get a gold skill i don't know how this affects because i've only had one engagement and uh well this, I, I lost but it's rigged so that, that that's fine uh, so i don't know how that's going to pan out um i think getting as many die as possible is good though so exp exploration of level two is probably the legit way to go possibly even three to get the silver Hmm, we'll come back to that. Stealth. Stealth, stealth, stealth. Your ability to move silently and out of sight is useful in many dialogues and events, and it also unlocks some stealth actions in combat. And so it does. So, yeah, we'll unlock that. Why not? Do these unlock anything? They don't. Speechcraft. This is the biggie. Uh, it is mostly useful in dialogues and events, but it also unlocks some intimidate and incite actions in combat. I mean, I'm thinking we go for six on that. I mean, how many points we've got left? 13. I think that's important. We can't go any higher, but that's fine. Cost 10. Yeah, but balance minus 4. What if you can talk well? Do you lose your balance? That makes no sense. Athletics. Uh, this one is uh, represents general fitness and increases the character's maximum HP with every point invested. It's also useful in dialogues and events when a strong or resistant body is needed to overcome a challenge. Oh. I mean, what can we get away with here? Three? Six? Are any of these cheaper? I don't think they are. They're all six now, aren't they? So as it stands... Yeah, these are all ten. So we've got one more point to invest on whatever level we want to do. I'm thinking for we go... Balance minus five. Why is that putting me off balance? I have no idea. You'd have thought that would be plus five, if anything, if it's athletics. I don't know. Let's just go with that. That looks pretty legit. That looks pretty legit. I mean, Bowen, great. Speech and athletics, awesome. We're all right on the rest. Let's... You still have some experience left to assign. Continue. Yes. You get more experience points as you go through the game. So that won't be an issue. It just means we'll be able to level up sooner. It has been two years since you, lo you lost your memory after a freak snowslide. Your saviors from that day are now your nomad family. Today is a day just like any other. You are out hunting in the forest with your companion and good friend, Jerome. You wake up in the woods, surrounded by snow and massive old trees. A cold wind is blowing in your face and your arms and legs are chilled to the bone. You feel a gentle tap on your shoulder. It's Jerome waking you up. Wake up! A beast took the bait we'd set. He smiles at you and whispers, Come on! Wow, he's got the whole post-apocalyptic pirate thing going on with the... Well, it's like a fallen down bandana. Yeah, kind of reminds me of One-Eyed Willy from the Goonies, but hey-ho. You feel confused, and the white glowing snow disorients you, but you manage to get on your feet. The old man looks at you with a friendly smile, waiting for your brain to start working again. He doesn't look that old. I look older, in all fairness. Hmm. 
So, what do we want to do? Give me a second. Just give me a second. I can barely feel my legs. What's up? Oh, why did I bother? <laughs> this is dreadful. I don't even know why I came here with you. We're not going to be a negative ninny. No, no, no. We've survived this long. And I'm, I'm going to take it that we've survived on positivity. So that's what we're going to do. So, uh, what's up? What do we have here? You look at that majestic deer. Today might be a lucky day. Excuse me, I just had a major sneezing fit. I probably flopped somewhere in the room, but I can't see where. It felt like it had some consistency behind it. Something definitely flew out my nose, but I can't see. Anyway, anyway, I digress. Now, <laughs> just look at that majestic deer. Today might be our lucky day. You're damn right. We'll see or let's wait for it. You know what? I'm not going to click on these and hover over them. We're just going to pick something from what it says on the left and then just go for it. So... You're damn right. I agree. It's been months since the last time we had deer. Let's get to a better position. Lord, by your bait, the deer moves closer. It's a large beast and it could provide food for your family for several days. Sounds good. So should we let Jerome shoot or should, do we shoot? I mean, I like to think I'm going to take the initiative here and, and, and crack on with things. After all, I am a born leader, or at least I will be. Jerome smiles at you and lowers his bow. It's all yours, but if you miss, I may have to make another plan for dinner. <gasps> Oh, well, the pressure's on now. Success! You slowly draw your bow, pointing the arrow at the deer's head. You hold your breath, then shoot. It's a perfect shot, and the deer falls on the snow with a muffled sound. <laughs> perfect shot. That's exactly why I wanted you to come with me. Let's go grab our dinner. Jerome starts walking towards the deer's carcass. You step closer to the deer. The snow under the dead beast is slowly turning red. Today's dinner will be a feast. We'll eat like kings. Let's head back. He looks up at the sun. It's not even noon yet. Hector will find some other chores for us to do. You can be sure of that. Oh, Hector. You tie the deer to a strong pole and head back to camp. Jerome keeps talking the whole way back, clearly excited by the successful hunt. Alrighty, so the map is divided into nodes. Click on the nearby node to move towards it. Moving will consume food, and running out of food will quickly lead to the death of the whole group. Indeed. That's where we're going then. You can already see the tents of the camp. You follow Jerome, then drop the deer to the ground. Well, we are going to eat deer for dinner. Jerome smiles and puts his hand on your shoulder. Well, well, well. Suddenly, Goran appears behind you. You brought back a week's worth of food. Where are the others, Goran? Or was it Goran? We'll go with Goran. You see Hector coming out of his tent. He doesn't look too well. They're hunting south of here. You know her other. She simply can't stand doing nothing. Oh, he does look a little bit red-eyed. Hmm. Uh, you look sick. Neither do I. Anything else to do? Say nothing. Well, it says he doesn't look too well. I like to think I'm the concerning type. So, you look sick. You don't seem very well, Hector. I'm fine, I'm fine. Hector coughs a couple times before speaking again. It's just a cold. It won't kill me. Famous last words. Well, this deer isn't going to butcher itself. Let's get started and maybe we'll have time for another run. Leave that to me. I'm stuck here anyway because my ankle still hurts and all I can do is limp around. Oh, Goran. Go for another run. Try to get as much as possible. There's a long road ahead and I don't want to hunt every day. Let's stock up on food now while we can. Okie dokie, Hector. Jerome looks at the sun. We have time, so I guess we could go for another one. Uh, so I'm ready. No time to get bored. Do you need some rest? Not much of a choice. Ooh. We'll, we'll play it with a slight tint of sarcasm, so no time to get bored. Well, at least we won't get bored, not with all those things to do. I guess it's better than nothing, but don't fall asleep again. I am the old guy. I should be the one allowed to randomly go to sleep. <laughs> oh, oh, Jerome, you one-eyed minx, you. Come on, let's go. You take the lead this time. Right, so we're heading to the question mark, which is not very clear, but it's up here. And once more... So, whenever you arrive at a location, this will tell us in the tutorial in a second, you will get a list of all the places you can scavenge or hunt at. And as for hunting, it is a forest. Each node can have different places in it in which you can scavenge for items or hunt for food. To hunt, click on the forest icons. Hint, hunting will provide food and resources like pelts. Always pay attention to the danger bar. The more dangerous a place is, the higher the chance to trigger negative events or even fights. This is the danger zone. This area seems relatively open and easy to explore, so hunting should be both simple and safe. I'm all for that. 
After taking your time to carefully explore the woods, you regroup in an open area and gather what you found. So we have picked up fur, timber, animal fat, and meat. And as you can see, they've all got values next to them in bullets. Uh, as it stands, we're going to take it all. Where's the meat gone? Who's got the meat? Dunno. All right. You're walking and looking around, hoping to see some movement. Then Jerome puts his hand on your shoulder and begins to speak. It's getting late. We should go back. If Hector wants to stock up on food so much, it's because we're going to be traveling for at least a week. And we don't want to be tired. Tomorrow we might have to walk for the entire day. You're getting old. You're right or fine. Fine's a bit abrupt. Jerome's been good to us so far. Uh, you're getting old. Again, it's a little bit sort of uh, disrespectful. So we'll go with you're right. You're right. Let's get a decent night's sleep. Let's see if the others found something. Hector is not the only one getting tired of stopping every two days to hunt for food. Oh, back to the question mark then. Finally, I really need some rest. You take a look around the camp. Your companions are talking and taking care of dinner. Looks like everyone made it back safely. Goran approaches you. Goran, whatever. Uh, so how did it go? Companions lost? I, I mean, it's just. I guess it just means he's left the group. Oh dear. Um, not too bad, really good. Uh, well, we got meat, fur, wood, fat. Not too bad. We brought back some more food. Come near the fire. Dinner is almost ready. You will need it for tomorrow. Hector seems eager to move out as soon as possible in the morning. You take your seat near the fire, exchanging greetings with the others. Irma, Goran, 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 whatever. Goran's wife starts giving out plates of cooked meat to the group. Ah, the cook. You can tell by the red bandana, I guess, or something like that. Let's all be thankful to our hunters for the meat we're about to eat. Hector coughs after speaking. Will you tell us where we are headed? Not far from here. Tomorrow we will go to a nearby town for scavenging. I hope to find something useful for our upcoming travels there. No, I mean, where are we going to end up in the long run? Where will we spend the winter? We will travel south, far from any common route. We must get away from the plains. Hector coughs again. Oh dear. The plains are becoming dangerous, and I'm not talking about all the bandit activity. There are rumours about the Red Horsemen prowling the area in the increasingly growing numbers. What does it mean? I'm tired of travelling without a purpose. We've always stayed in the plains. Why should we travel to unknown lands? Oh, we're almost stirring up shit. Here we go. Don't worry, it's all snow and cold just like here. You won't be missing much. I don't care what we do. If the plains have become that dangerous, then we should probably leave. Who the hell are you? You have no name. He's the bearded wonder. I won't put my children at risk without a reason, and travelling away from any known route is a huge risk, especially when the only thing we know is what we're is that we're going south. Okay, so we can abruptly cut her off. Hector's never wrong. Eh. Does it matter? I agree. We need to know more. Say nothing. So it's sort of going down from sort of sticking up to Hector to agreeing with Irma. Uh, I mean, does it matter? Sounds good. I don't want to say he's never wrong. I'm not going to cut her off because it's a valid point and she's got kids to think about. Um, we need to know more. I mean, Hector's a leader. You, you've got to have someone to take charge of things. So I'm just going to does it matter? Does it really matter? The white wasteland is all the same. Nothing but snow and danger everywhere. We're nomads. Travelling is a part of our life. That is true. From what we know, the white wasteland has no end and the mantle covers the whole world. Who are you? Who are these people popping up and why have they got names? We'll call her Pearl Necklace. <laughs> I have the right to know where me, my husband, and my children are going to end up. South is not enough. I want to know what we are going to face. Well, no one can answer that. It's the unknown. There's no need to worry about that. We've already been south of here. Jerome turns to you. Do you remember where we found our friend? We're getting close to that area. Uh, so I can say it should be fine. I lost my memory. We're not, you don't have to worry or say nothing. I mean, I've lost my memory. I don't, I don't remember what happened beforehand. That's from what I gather from the, the introduction. So um, I don't really want to state that because that's in terms that um, I'm useless. <laughs> so, so I don't want to do that. Um, it should be fine. We don't have to worry. Say nothing. Uh, I'm just going to say nothing, I think. And what are we going to do next? Do we have a place to spend the winter or are we just running away from the plains without a real purpose? 
Hector is becoming annoyed. I already said that the planes are becoming dangerous. You don't want a Red Horseman clan to attack us and enslave for the survivors, do you? It's better to walk on the mantle for the entire winter than to face them. The sooner we run away, the safer we'll be. So that's crazy. Let's think of a plan. It's the best way. So we have no choice. We'll know what to do or say nothing. <laughs> Just stay silent. Stay silent. I mean, we've been with these guys for two years. So it's not like we don't know them and we don't want to get involved. We do, we do have a right to say something. Um, I figure we'll, we'll get out of there and we'll just, you know, we'll do something. We'll, we'll just get on with it, I suppose. We'll know what to do. We'll figure out what to do. If the planes are actually becoming that dangerous, we have no other choice but to run away. Yeah. And that's what I thought. It's not eager to walk on unknown routes either. Well, I'm not even eager, should I say. Uh, but at least we won't have to face the Red Horsemen. Who are these Red Horsemen? And why are they red? I mean, the Horsemen part is fine, but why red? And... Am I the only one with a working brain around here? We'll be running into the unknown, she says. Hey, it's not up to you. Better than dying. You're just afraid or say nothing. I mean, yeah, it's true. But it's like sometimes the grass is green on the other side or the snow is white on the other side. You don't know until you go and try it. I mean, it, it could mean certain death, but I'm trying not to focus on that too much if I can. Uh, uh hmm. I don't like her. She's very abrupt. Goran's all right. Irma's a bit of a... Hmm, one of them. So, better than dying. You're just afraid. I'm going to say better than dying. The unknown is better than certain death. At this point, this is the safest choice. Yeah, because no one ever got killed by not knowing what he was about to face. Do as you like, but I already know we're all going to regret this. Irma goes inside her tent before giving anyone the chance to say anything. See what I mean? I just I hate people like that. See out the argument and listen to everyone's opinions or just piss off, basically, from the start. Just she, I've lost respect for her. I've lost respect for her. I'm, I, I, I sincerely hope nothing happens because she's the cook and I, and I can't cook. I can kill a deer, but I can't cook. So she, she is useful. But as far as her opinion is concerned, no. Face out the arguments. Be an adult. I'll talk to her. I'm worried too. But facing the Red Horseman scares me even more. She will understand eventually. Hector coughs a little before replying. I hope so. I don't want to discuss this ever again. Well said, Hector. Nothing of importance happens for the rest of the evening. You eventually go to bed to prepare yourself for the next day. You wake up in the morning, hearing voices coming from the outside. Hector and the others are preparing the plan for the day. Okay, people, we will now spread out in pairs and search for anything useful in that small town over there. Be especially on the lookout for any tools. Irma will stay here with the children and guard our stuff. If anything happens, scream. I will go with Jerome. Goran, you will go with Mark. Hector turns to you. And you will go with Demetra. I hope it won't be a waste of time. Goran puts on his backpack. I'm tired of seeing only empty buildings. Ask about what the family needs. Ask about the area and depart. So let's see what's going on. Do we need anything in particular? Tools are anything we can sell or use, but I won't complain if you bring back an assault rifle. Neither will I. Or ask about the area. Is there anything we need to know about this place? It's an ancient town, so there's a lot of buildings here. I hope we can find something to scavenge, something left behind. All right then, well, come on then, Demetra, let's go. Ah, pull necklace from him. Demetra, Demetra nods at you. I'll follow your lead. Okay, so we're going over here then, I guess. One, two. Uh, we have a farm. Scavenging is like hunting, but it is initiated by clicking on building icons. Scavenging is the best way to get items and crafting resources. Always pay attention to the danger bar. The more dangerous the place is. Oh, we read that bit. Travelling through the white wasteland, you see an old farm. Even if it was scavenged plenty of times already, perhaps the looters missed something of worth. Ah, uh, low danger. Is this loot? Is this... I, I presume this is loot on top. Let's go. Ah, oh, success! The farm has already been scavenged plenty of times and it takes a lot of careful searching to recover anything of worth. So we've got two bits of cloth. Two sewing kits and two leather. I shall take it all. Take it all. Where's the meat gone still? Who keeps taking the meat? It is close to nightfall. We should head back to camp. Demetra stops in her tracks. I'm getting shivers all over and it's not from the cold. There's something dark out there waiting for us to close our eyes so it may take us by surprise. Well, aren't you a cheery one? Jeez, why do I get stuck with a glass half empty girl? What do you mean? I know that feeling. 
Don't be paranoid. I feel that too. Let's just go back. Hmm. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, a winterly, a wintry wasteland. It's going to give you the heebie-jeebies. Let's ask what she means. What do you mean? There's something dreadful ahead of us. Expecting us to drop our guard, waiting for the right moment to strike. Uh, well, we'll stay vigilant, I guess. We'll be vigilant and ready for anything. Let's just hope that keeping our eyes open will be enough to face whatever it is that awaits us. We better move while there's still some sunlight. Back we go. You reach the camp after a few hours. Goran spots you from a distance and raises his hand in a greeting. You can see sadness on his face. What's going on? It's not easy to say. Goran takes a deep breath. Hector is badly sick. He passed out a few hours ago. He's in his tent now, barely able to breathe. Ooh. Well, I suppose you've got to ask the question, will he survive? The situation is desperate. We have no medicine for this kind of sickness and he's pretty far gone. Oh. You see Jerome coming out of Hector's tent, his face painted with suffering. As far as you know, he and Hector had been good friends for a long time. People gather around Hector's tent in silence. Mark finally asks the question on everyone's mind. How is he? In that same moment, Irma comes out of the tent. It's Mark! The bearded wonder. Jerome sighs. It's over. There was nothing we could do. Oh, nosy! We've lost our leader. Oh my god! Why didn't he say a thing about his health? You know, Hector, he wanted us to get away from the planes and he didn't want anything to stop us. Goran stays silent for a minute. Then he raises his head and speaks again. I will prepare the body for the funeral. You should go and take some rest. People scatter around while Jerome comes near you and sighs again. The two of you are now alone. I met Hector more than 20 years ago, and yet he said nothing, not to anyone, not to me. He just died and left a mess behind him. Tomorrow we'll need to vote for our new leader, and that is going to be total chaos. Everyone will bicker, and I bet Irma will go crazy again and threaten people while screaming like a lunatic. Sounds like Irma. Well, he's known him a long time. I think we should probably be sympathetic at this point. He seems a bit bummed out. I'm really sorry for your loss. Thank you, but I've seen more friends die in my time. I'm lucky to be old, but hopefully I won't have to attend another friend's funeral. I need to be alone. Call me when Goran is finished with the pyre. Jerome walks away and sits down outside the camp. After some time passes, you are called by Demetra. Everything is ready for the funeral. Everyone gathers around a big stack of wood. After making sure they are all present, Goran throws a lit torch on the pyre, slowly setting it ablaze, shrouding Hector's body in a dance of bright flames. So long, Hector! Jerome says nothing, but the sadness on his face is unmistakable. He just stands in front of the pyre and stays there even after everyone else is gone. You're tired and so you proceed to your tent, hoping to get a decent night's sleep. But a terrible scream wakes you up in the middle of the night. You see strange lights through the fabric of your tent and hear the noise of hooves stomping the ground. There are also sounds of gunfire. You are under attack! What oh you advise you have to combine different actions into abilities. Your action pool is determined by the equipment and skills of your party. Every turn you draw 12 actions from your pool. Click on the actions to select and combine them. In the lower area you will see if the current com combination can trigger an ability. Actions have three different tier levels, bronze, silver and gold. The higher the tier level, the more powerful the ability effect. To win a fight, bring your opponent's HP to zero. Losing morale won't lead to a direct defeat, but the more morale a party loses, the less damage it will deal. Raising morale, on the other hand, will improve damage dealt. Penalty actions can't be combined with other actions, so the more penalties you have in your deck, the less useful you will be. The less useful will be the actions you draw each turn. Items can be consumed once per turn to add actions to your current pool, but it's also used with standard abilities involving the use of firearms. There we go. So this is the one which you are going to lose. As it stands, we have us with 90 health and uh, 50 morale against the uh, the nasty people who have 900 so we're never gonna win we're never gonna win what we're we gonna do uh, we've got me and Demetra start fight I haven't really got a lot lots of penalty actions uh, so we've got maneuver stealth insight gold arrow nice gold snipe bronze threaten so how about insight and threaten leadership Allies morale recovery and enemies morale reduction. I'll take that. Up. Right, so uh, I guess we're doing some fighting now. 
unseen. Increases damage dealt by allies for three turns. Reduces damages dealt by enemies for three turns. I'll take that too. And then we just got stuff to use. So, reposition. Allows morale, recovery, and damage absorption. I mean, does that do anything by itself? It does. So, let's use those. And then we'll use that. Boom! 13! Oh, they'll be dead in about 25 minutes. Ow. Okay. Ow. Right, so they pretty much knocked our health in half in the first go. Awesome. Let's do the same again, simply because there's no point doing anything else. Uh, that and that. And that. Oh, zero damage now? Oh, what a mistake it's a maker. Just make, just make it quick. That's all I ask. Are we deed? We deed. You feel weak and aching. You try to crawl on the ground, but each move causes your body to explode in pain. You try to stay awake, but soon your willpower weakens and you pass out. After that, there is only darkness. You don't know how long you stay unconscious. Strange dreams creep into your dormant mind. Dreams of a different place, a different time. You see a shiny tower rising up towards the sky. A piece of technology you've never seen in the white wasteland. Technology belonging to an ancient, broken world. Hey, wake up. Are you okay? You hear Jerome's voice. You finally realise that you're dreaming. And this sudden realisation brings you back to the waking world. What happened? How long was I out? My head hurts. At this point, I think finding out how long I've been out is probably the best thing to say. Well, we know what happened. We got attacked. How long have I been unconscious? Just a few hours, but don't worry. You didn't miss anything good. You look around. The morning sun blinds you at first, but then you're able to see that you and your mates are sitting on the ground tied up. You're not the only prisoners, as there are other people here that seem to share your situation. Armed bandits are guarding the area. You can see many tents scattered around, so it's difficult to assess how many of them are there. Running away from them won't be easy. They have guns and everything else they need to keep us in our place. You will never escape. We tried, but there's too many of them, and they have horses and guns. If they want us alive, I fear we will all soon become slaves. Well, for someone who's very, very negative on their demeanor, you've got a very jolly face, Mr. Eskimo. Now, I'd rather die as lots of us. Say nothing. Uh, I think this is the time to say nothing. Sorry, but I'm not becoming anyone's slave. Oh, of course not, Irma. I won't be beaten again just because one of you wants to do something stupid. I don't know who you are. But that, that's a valid point. That's a valid point. They'll beat all of us, Joseph. But what should we do? Just wait here and be sold as slaves? Uh, okay, so the other guy was Joseph. Long story short, we tried to run away during the night. They found us and beat the shit out of us. End of story. Uh, all right, well, again, we'll keep our head down. Let's not say anything. A bandit approaches you and sh starts shouting. Shut the fuck up, all of you. We're moving now. Prepare yourselves. It's going to be a long walk. You and all the other prisoners start walking with your heads hands tied along the bandit's caravan. You're constantly under watch and unable to find a way to break free. Day after day, you've become resigned to your fate. The bandits are watching you all the time, and they don't even allow you to talk among yourselves. You barely get to know the ones who share your ordeal. Carlos and April ate a couple, are a couple, and they were in the same group as Joseph when they got attacked and kidnapped. There's a young girl, Eva. She seems sad and never speaks. The only thing you're able to discover is that the bandits killed her family. But finally, after walking for several days through the White Plains, something happens. The bad thing is that it doesn't look like something good. Not at all. You see three people peacefully approaching the bandits. They don't look like common survivors. Even the bandits who assaulted you, despite their abundant resources, are not that well equipped. Polished and shiny weapons, high-tech equipment. All the bandits look at these three people with reverence and awe. You've never seen anything like that in the White Wasteland. One of the masked soldiers speaks up in a feminine voice. Proceed with the tests and let's move on. We have no time to waste. I'm sure they're good. Some of the prisoners are young and healthy. They'll be perfect for your needs. 
The woman suddenly turns to face the bandit and stands still for a couple of seconds in an intimidating silence. We'll see. They approach you and other prisoners and start using medical equipment to take some of your blood. They take a sample from each one of you. They walk away and after a few minutes they come back again. The mysterious woman looks at Goran and Irma and then nods at her two companions. We'll take those two and their children. They're the only ones we're interested in. Do what you want with the others. We have no use for them. They walk away taking Goran, Irma, Irma and the children with them. Jerome tries to stand up on his feet and protest but he's kicked in the stomach and falls to the ground. The mysterious strangers leave with your companions in tow. While they disappear into the mist, the bandits order you to get on your feet and start walking. Oh dear. Well, at least we lost Irma, I suppose. Although she was the cook. I'm going to have to eat snow now for the rest of eternity. That's, that's not very good. So, as long as we stay away from the yellow snow, all will be well. And so you're walking, just like any other day, with armed guards all around you. But then you hear some bandits shout. You turn to see what's happening. At least 30 horsemen are charging the bandits, quickly descending from the top of a small hill. They're wearing red. These are the red horsemen, raiders and pillagers feared in the entire region. Ah, oh, shit. The bandits start shooting at them, but the horsemen rapidly reach your position and engage your captors in close combat. Jerome lets out a shout. Let's go! Then he breaks into a sprint. You and the other prisoners attempt to escape while the bandits are too busy worrying about their own lives. As you keep running away from your captors, you hear the sounds of bullets whizzing by you. One of those bullets hits Joseph in the chest and he falls to the ground. <gasps> April stops running and kneels by her companion's body. Joseph! Joseph, please stand up! He's dead, love! He took a hit to the chest. It's not good. Drag April away. Tell her to leave him. Keep running. Let's drag her away. Drag April along with you away from the body. While you pull April away from the dead body of her former companion, you hear Carlos's voice. April, run! He's dead! Run! You're still being shot at, but the bullets pierce the snow around you without hitting anyone. So too far away to be an easy target. You see the entrance of a tunnel ahead of you, and your group runs towards it. Your captors are now far behind, still busy fighting the horsemen. You take a last look behind and see no one coming after you. The tunnel is quite long, but after a few minutes you finally see the light and feel the cold wind coming from the outside. You are now free to travel across the plains and explore the world. Hold the right mouse button and drag to move the camera on the map or use WASD keys. Use the buttons near the character's avatars to talk with your companions or change their equipment. You can also heal them if they are injured. Healing character costs a single unit of medicine. The more wounded your companions are, the less health points you will have during the fights. It is very important to equip your companions, otherwise they will be useless in fights. You can do this by opening the inventory. And that is as far as I'm going to take it in this episode. It's uh, It's been a quite a dramatic start. Lots of death. We've lost people. We've gained people. Uh, but now we're, well... We're going to that question mark, I guess, and then we'll, <laughs> we'll figure out what, what else we're going to do. So um, this is the going to be the, the Sleepy Sunday series for the foreseeable future. It's only going to be one playthrough. If we die prematurely, then so be it. We'll just end it there. It's all about the story at the end of the day. And uh, we'll just see how we get on. So thank you for watching. As always, a like is appreciated. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take it easy.